Welcome to the ABG Fantasy Football Podcast. That was my interpretation of the ray gun from Call of Duty Nazi Zombies. Uh, this is the ABG Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm the host with the most. My name is Michael Marcanio. I'm here with my co-host, also known as Itchy Boy T. His real name is Tyler Ravellis. He's got all the insight, everything you need to know fantasy-wise. He's your guy. So am I, kind of. Uh, but check it out. We, we got a fun-filled episode. Fun-filled. Uh, this is episode 54 of the podcast for season three. We're going to do matchups. We're doing fantasy previews. This episode's all about who to start and who to sit in week four of the NFL. I cannot believe it's the week four of the NFL. It feels like we just started, but here, we're in it. We're watching football. Only one game's been postponed, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll post some stuff on how to pivot from that. Uh, so check those things out. You can check all that stuff out on Instagram or Twitter. Just go ahead and follow us. All those links are in the description down below. You know what else is down below in the description? A little navigation tool. I, I, I put a table of contents in the beginning of every or in the description of every episode. So that way, if you want us hear, want to hear us talk about the Washington football team game. That's very hard to say. Uh, if you want to know about what to do, if you want to play that tight end logan thomas go ahead and look in the description there should be a, a timestamp there and you can just navigate straight to the episode on youtube it's clickable so you just click it and it goes straight to that part of the episode on uh the apple podcast app or any audio app you use that link uh, that timestamp you will have to actually scroll through but it is very helpful if you don't have full, uh, if you don't have time for the entire episode so these fantasy preview uh game previews these matchup breakdowns are usually take us a while to do so um yeah that that's like really helpful the timestamps. while you're on the apple podcast app by the way give it leave us a rating and review we're doing a jersey giveaway right now so if you want to go ahead and be eligible for that go go ahead and leave us a review uh subscribe to us on youtube follow us on twitter and we'll be announcing the winner on monday night to von miller denver broncos jersey it's a white one it's pretty sweet um, but yeah, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Uh, you know, if you want, if you want that extra fantasy advice, but yeah, so today we're just doing the morning matchups. Um, so we're, we'll be going over the over unders on all that and all the players that are in and out who you should start, who you should sit that good stuff. So just want to get a little intro beginning of the podcast out of the way, but now that we have it out of the way, let's get into it huh boys let's do it let's do it all right let's go into it here we got all right so now first game we got the saints taking on the detroit lions it is in detroit uh the saints are favored by three points the over under is 54 so these over unders basically what it is it's a combined total points uh from each team so the higher the number the more points are predicted to score in the game. It's kind of a helpful tool when you're going for fantasy. If it's a high over under, higher chance of your player scoring in that game. So um, this is one of the uh, regular over under is about 45, I would say. So um, this is a pretty high over under. Let's go on the Saints side. Drew Brees, are you starting him? He's been disappointing you. Yeah, I would not be starting Drew Brees. He'd be out of my top 12 quarterbacks for the week. He's actually quarterback 19 right now on ESPN in, in like the standard scoring. Um, and only one of his three games has he had over 15 points. Uh, just you know, looking at some of the practice reports, they all just kind of came out for Friday for all the teams. Um, no Jared Cook and no Michael Thomas. So yeah, that's just that's not good if you're Drew Brees. And then also their Jared role, Cook's officially out. Jared Cook is officially out now. Sorry. And then they also have a, an offensive guard, Andreas Pete, who's a Pro Bowler, but he's a guard like tackle. He's going to be out as well. So, I mean, for a guy, Drew Brees, who just hasn't been playing well as it is, now he's, you know, losing Michael Thomas again, and now Jared Cook is out as well with a groin injury. Yeah, there's just better options, I think, instead of Drew Brees. Yeah. Would you play, like, Joe Burrow? I would play Joe Burrow yeah. over Drew Brees. I, would say, I wouldn't I would be dropping too. Drew Brees. So, like, I, in one of my leagues, Drew Brees was on the waiver wire. I went to go pick him up. I think he's there's better days ahead for Drew Brees. Obviously, like I said, you're going to get a scenario or in the future where you get Michael Thomas back, Cook will be there. You know, and this offense is going to be at full strength 
eventually. So you don't drop So I wouldn't up. drop Drew Brees, but I think instead of Drew Brees being like this set it and forget it quarterback one that he was in the past couple of uh, seasons, he's more of this matchup based quarterback where now you have him and another quarterback and you're, and, you know, week to week you're playing whoever has the best matchup. Like you just said, if I have Burrow and Drew Brees, I'm not dropping Drew Brees, but I would be playing my guy, Joe Donkey. Yeah, I'm with that. I feel that. All right, we can move on to the running backs. By the way, we go quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, defense uh, when we go through these matchups. So uh, we got Alan Kamara. I think that's a set and forget it. You're playing Alan Kamara every week. Uh, we can move on to Latavius Murray. Would you play Latavius Murray? Uh, I would not, but just a good guy in the depth. You know, if you have a Kamara, it's not bad to have him as a handcuff just in case. Yeah, one of the better handcuffs or, for sure. Or, you know, I mean, I think he's had two games where he's had double-digit carries. So just you know, it's just a, he's a depth running back play, but he's you're not starting with. Yeah, don't start Latavius. Uh, Michael Thomas, we talked about he's gonna be out. He's out. I'm kind um, of sad because uh, in one of my leagues, I'm 0 and 3. I'm just I keep getting hit with the injury bug. Everyone I get is hurt. I lost Saquon, Paris Campbell. I mean, Galladay's been out for the first two of the three games, and I you know Chark was out a game. I just I just can't seem to catch a break in that league. Um, so I was like, you know, I just gotta make a move. Trade a couple players away to get Michael Thomas because I'm like I'm just trying to get these guys who have high ceilings, hoping that Michael Thomas will come back. Now Michael Thomas isn't playing again, so I just don't know what to do in that league. I think I think you're doing just fine. I don't know. But that leaves uh, Emmanuel Sanders, and then I don't think I have a template for him, but uh, also Traquan Smith. What do you think about these two other receivers? Uh, I mean Manny Smith, uh, Manny Smith. <laughs> I combine them; they fusion, yeah. uh, super same fuse together. Uh, Manny Sanders. Uh, former man crush Manny Sanders, no yeah, longer. We the liked man, him last year. No longer the it. man crush. Uh, he's a flex wide receiver at best for me. Maybe a wide receiver three. I mean, his targets have just not been anything sexy, especially with Michael Thomas not being out. You thought maybe he could kind of take over, but I mean, his targets are five, three, and five. I, you know, if we're not hyped on Drew Brees, you know, could he fall into the end zone? Uh, Manny Sanders, yeah, he could. He's done two of the three games, but I feel like he's touchdown dependent. And if he doesn't get in the end zone, there's just not enough volume in terms of the receptions and the yards there. Yeah, I would say more of a, confident. I would say Manny Sanders might be more of a standard play uh, for a flex, yeah. if po possibly, uh, if you're going to start him. But yeah. yeah, would you be comfortable with Traquan Smith? Maybe. I mean, uh, I know you kind of like Traquan Smith, but I would be looking for other options for my receiver yeah. position compared to Traquan and Manny Sanders, if I could. I think the matchup uh, is not – Jeff Okuda is looking good. Yeah. They also uh, have uh, Desmond Trufant, too. Still a pretty decent corner. They got him from uh, the Falcons. Yeah. So, some pretty <laughs> Falcons decent. corner? Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like we said, Jared Cook is out. Um, go on to the Saints defense. You playing the Saints defense in this? Uh, I am not. The Saints defense have been pretty bad. They've given up 34 more points the last two weeks. And then just looking at the practice reports, they're actually going to be out two of their top corners, Janoris Jenkins and Marshawn Lattimore, are yeah. both going to be out of this game. What do they so move that's P.J. Be Williams a no outside? For me, dog. Move P.J. Williams outside? Who knows? But, yeah, that's going to be a no for me on the Saints defense. Yeah. Uh, so we can move on to the Detroit Lions. We got Matthew Stafford. Uh, with those defensive guys out, do you are you feel comfortable playing the uh, Detroit Lions quarterback? That we we liked him in the off season. This might actually be a decent matchup that people don't realize. Yeah, I mean we were pretty hyped on Stafford coming into the year, you know, because he was on pace for like five thousand yards. You know, put up some good numbers for, through the first eight weeks of last year before he went out with the back injury. Um, I was not hyped on Stafford at first with this matchup. Um, but then, like I said, you, the, 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 you know, the practice reports came out, and all these defensive players are out. That just boosted my confidence in a guy like Stafford. You know, he finally got Kenny Galladay back last week. We saw them, you know, clicking on all cylinders. Uh, you know, Kenny Galladay had a good game right there. Um, you know, he hasn't topped 300 yards in a game yet all season, so you don't like seeing that. He'd be like a back-end QB1 for me. But like I said, with no Janoris Jenkins, no Marshawn Lattimore, it just boosts the confidence that I have in guys like Kenny Galladay. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr. and Hawkinson and St Stafford's ability to get them the ball. So yeah, I do kind of like Stafford in this matchup. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad. Would you Stafford or Fitzpatrick? Ooh, see, I kind of like my guy Fitz right here, and I can get into that game when we get there. Yeah, to, but uh, yeah, I, I do like Fitz on that uh, one. Pretty good. Just, this week. I'm just trying to give a little level to that, and yeah, also no. that's all. Uh, I, I do like Fitz. <laughs> I do like Fitz Magic though. Because I, I that Homer would, pick. Yeah. Cause I'm a Might Dolphins be a homer fan. pick because yeah. you're a Dolphins fan. But uh, we can move on to these running backs here. We got DeAndre Swift. What's going on with that, everybody? I don't I don't have any injury reports for any of these guys. 
Uh, what's what do you got for DeAndre? I mean, this running back situation is just a mess. You know, you have DeAndre Swift there. You, they draft him. You're thinking, okay, he's going to be the guy because carry has been so injury prone. But then they go out and they get AP once he gets released from the uh, the Washington football team. I bet. I almost said the Redskins. Um, yeah. If there's only one running back, I'm even interested in playing for the Detroit Lions, and that's AP. I mean, he had 60% of the snaps last week. And then in terms of, like, the total touches for these three running backs, AP has had 47 total touches. Swift with 17, carry on Johnson with 19. So, I mean, you got AP out here is pretty much double or tripling uh, the touches for these guys. It's AP or nothing for me in this uh, yeah. running backs. I'm kind of I'm kind of with you there. Yeah. Uh, okay, we can move on to the wide receivers. Then we got Kenny Galladay. I think that's a set it and forget it. And especially with these cornerbacks being out, that's a nice matchup, huh? Yeah, a little shaky at first, you know, thinking he could go against Marshawn Lattimore, J- Janoris Jenkins. You know, those guys are both pretty solid corners. But if they're not going to be there, oh, I'm down up Kenny Galladay. And we could yeah. see a monster game. I'm expecting a monster game from Kenny Galladay. Nice. I like that. Uh, how about Marvin Jones? Do you think that's uptake some too with these corners out? I think it's a, like, I think it's a speculative play. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of gross. Like, he hasn't really put up any numbers with Galladay out. I mean, he hasn't had any more than four catches in a game. He hasn't topped 60 yards in any game either. And these are two games without Kenny Galladay. So you were kind of expecting some better numbers from a guy like Marvin Jones Jr. He, he'd be like a wide receiver three flex option for me. I think just having those corners out for the Saints, it boosts his value, obviously. And could he fall into the end zone? Uh, 100%. And, you know, if Staff- if Stafford, I think it's kind of just tied to Stafford. Is Stafford going to have a big game? If he does, then yeah, Marvin Jones could have a big game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, TJ Hawkinson. I'm not mad at the Hawkinson. I mean, four to five catches and 50 to 60 yards in every single game. I think he's a little got, got a safe floor in PPR leagues compared to like a standard league. But he's like a back end tight end one in my rankings this week. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think there's there's definitely a, a couple guys that I would play over him. But it's um, if you're in a spot where you had like Jonu Smith or – you know, maybe like you could pivot to TJ Hawkinson for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. We can move on to the defense. You playing lines defense in this one. I'm not, it's going to be a negative Bronco negative lion for me, actually. Uh, so we can move on to the next game. So you think the Lions could upset on this one, huh? I'm going to take the lines plus four. I think it went down to plus three, but yeah, you know, we yeah. live in Las Vegas. So we like to bet a little bit on Sunday, yeah. get a little Just bit a little, of action on the game. Uh, yeah, I will yeah. be taking the lines plus the points. Sneaky money line p- uh, pick right there, too. Yeah, I like to do those little three-teamers, three, teamers, three uh, underdog teamers. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, okay, let's move on to the next game. We got the Los Angeles Chargers are taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Tom Brady's. Uh, it's in Tampa Bay. The uh, Buccaneers are favored to win by seven. The over-under is 42.5. That is a very high – uh, spread for the over under being so low, so that's pretty interesting. But that being said, we'll start on Chargers side of the ball. Are you playing Justin Herbert in Week Four? I am not. It's gonna be, uh, I'm not going to either. He wouldn't be a bad stash, like I said. If you want to match up based on your quarterbacks and get two of them, I mean, 300 plus passing yards in each of his first two career games. So you like seeing that from the young rookie out of Oregon. But his, this is going to be his first true test going on the road playing against Tampa Bay, who's got a good front seven. So we'll see how the rookie does on the road. I just feel more comfortable with some other options that are available probably on the waiver wire instead of Herbert. But it is uh, reassuring, and you you like what you're seeing out of the the rookie in his first two starts if you're a Chargers fan. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, Okay, we got Austin Eckler. I think that's a set it and forget it. You got to play Eckler. Yeah, Eckler, 20 or more touches every single game so far. Set it and forget it. Lots of receptions. You like to see that in PPR leagues for sure. Uh, How about Joshua Kelly? So, yeah, Kelly had the big week two, 23 touches or 23 carries. And then you're starting in week three, did not have that big game. I would not be starting Joshua Kelly this week. Tampa Bay's run defense, like I said, a tough front seven. Uh, they're really stingy against the run, and they've been stingy against the run for a while now, going back into last year. They allow the second fewest yards per carry, and they're only allowing 70 yards per game on the ground. Um, I would say uh, maybe target him after this game, possibly. 
Yeah, I, you're not dropping game. Joshua Kelly because he's kind of like a poor man's version of what Melvin Gordon was for the Chargers last year. He's kind of just like filling that role. He only has four less carries than Eckler does on the season, so he's still heavily utilized in this offense. Just a bad matchup for a guy who's going against one of the better run, def- run defenses on the road. Um, yeah, so I would be sitting Joshua Kelly right here. If yeah. he doesn't fall in the end zone, I can't imagine a scenario where he's putting up. Some I'd be more dub- inclined maybe in a standard yeah. league, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm with you on there. Matchup isn't looking great for Josh Kelly. Uh, how about Keenan Allen? Keenan Allen could be one of the best draft day values right now. I mean, we were, we were talking about how, you know, go yeah. running back early because these receivers in these middle rounds, five, six, seven, you know, four, five, six, seven. There were some good receivers you could get right there, and that's where Keenan Allen was going. I mean, I know you got Keenan Allen in the fourth, fifth round in one of our I leagues. Got, I went, I went Keenan. I think in the fifth, sixth, I went Keenan Allen, Allen Robinson on the turn. Yeah, that's, that's a steal right there. Yeah. But I mean, week one with Tyrod Taylor wasn't anything sexy, but since Herbert's been in, he, the guy has twenty catches in the last two games, and he is kind of Herbert's go-to guy, especially with Mike Williams being out. He's uh, actually going to be out this week. You're definitely dialing up Keenan Allen. He's a wide receiver one this week. Yeah. He's, he's a wide receiver one going forward. Yeah, so yeah. Mike, Mike Williams, Williams is, is out. out. So we can move on to Hunter Henry. Are you playing Hunter Henry? Yeah, I mean, no, like I said, no, Mike Williams. By, um, by the way, the Mike Williams injury is um, it's it's his hamstring. So his original injury was his shoulder, and now it's his hamstring. So it's just FYI. It's a whole different he's injury. just getting banged up, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Hunter Henry, sorry. Yeah, so Hunter Henry, you're dialing him up. He's a tight end one, especially, like you said. I think that this offense is going to move through Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry, and then you know Eckler's going to not get 11 catches, but he'll get some catches as well. I am curious to see how the uh, corner Carlton Davis does against Keenan Allen, but uh, I think with Justin Herbert, the way he's been targeting Keenan Allen enough that it's, it's worth it. Um, hopefully it stays Justin Herbert. I like watching him play. I like watching a young guy who plays the way he, he does. Um, but yeah, Hunter Henry, play him. Chargers defense against the Buccaneers. I'm actually not mad at the Chargers defense if you wanted to stream them potentially. I mean, still a good front seven. You got Bosa, you got uh, Melvin Ingram, Kenneth Murray, the middle linebacker, rookie. I know they lost Derwin James. They did lose Chris Harris, but how, this secondary is still really deep. You got Casey Hayward, Chris Mikey Harris, D. Uh, Mikey D, uh, Desmond King is the guy I was talking about. But um, yeah, yeah, and and you know. No uh, Chris Godwin for the Buccaneers. So, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at potentially streaming the Chargers. Yeah, I'm not mad at it either. It doesn't look great, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, we can move on to the Buccaneers. We got Tom Brady. You just lighten up TB12. Tom fucking Brady. I, I don't I will not. I think there's just better options. He's QB17 on the year. It's a tough matchup. Like I said, the – the Chargers defense is, you know, one of the better defenses in the league, even with all the injuries that they've uh, been sustaining. And when you lose a guy like Chris Godwin, it's just it's tough, you know, because I feel like this. If I'm if I'm the Chargers defense, I'm really just doubling Mike Evans the whole game. I'm like Casey Hayward, shadow him. We're doubling him the whole game. We're not letting Mike Evans beat us. I'd rather see guys like Scotty Miller, who he's questionable. He doesn't know how to put up points. Um, you know, O.J. Howard, Gronk, I mean, are they going to run the ball in that? Like, yeah, so I just would not be looking to start Tom Brady right here. There's just some better yeah. options. <clears throat> yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, how about, so Ronald Jones, I guess we could talk about Leonard Fournette first. Leonard Fournette is going to be out. He's got an ankle injury, so just know if you got Leonard Fournette, pull him out of your lineup. Uh, and then we got Ronald Jones. You're excited to play Ronald Jones this week with the Fournette out because it seems like McCoy is not uh, there. Yeah, so, I mean, week one, Ronald Jones, 17 touches. Uh, week two, he fumbled, and then Fournette came in. It was like the Fournette show right there. Uh, but week three, you got Ronald Jones come back in, and he regained, you know, the majority of the snaps and majority of the touches. Fournette, I think he left towards the tail end of the game with an injury, which is inevitably going to keep him out of this game. So, yeah, I do love me some Ronald Jones this week. It, like I said, it is a tough matchup against the Chargers front seven. They got, do have some a good defense, but... In games where Ronald Jones has had 15 or more touches, he's averaged 16 uh, PPR points per game, and he's had 80 or more scrimmage yards in every single one of those games. And, you know, we said it. I know Dre was here. He, he had all the numbers when we really broke down the teams in the offseason. Uh, like I said, when Ronald Jones gets 15 or more touches, he's always productive. He's always getting you double-digit fantasy points. So, yeah, in a game where there's no Fournette, McCoy's kind of like that 
the pass catching back out of this group, you know, but not really the the rusher, you know, not not a lot of rush attempts for LaShawn McCoy on the season. You know, we could see Ronald Jones, you know, get another 15, potentially 20 total touches in this game. I like to see that. One time that I will suggest to play Buccaneers running back. Uh, so Leonard Fournette's out. And then we also got Chris Godwin is out with a hamstring. Yeah. Uh, they were so. actually saying that his injury could limit him or keep him out next week because they play on Thursday night. Yeah. So it could be another uh, absence for him as well. Kind of tough if you have Chris Godwin. I mean, he got Definitely. hurt, you know, I think week one maybe had a good game. But they got hurt and he came back. So he's just been like all over the place. And it's just, you know, I don't know if it's – no preseason for these guys. You know, it's just hard for them to go like 0 to 100, you know, in these games. But, yeah, just tough if you're a Chris Godwin owner, especially after how good he did last year. For sure. Uh, we can move on to Mike Evans. Mike Evans is looking ready to go. I think you got to light him up, even though it's a little bit tougher matchup. But I, I think you got to play Mike Evans for sure. Yeah, you're definitely down on Mike Evans, but it's just crazy. I was looking at some of his numbers. It's just like a hashtag uh, interesting stat right here. In two of his three games, he's had two total yards. And in, but in both of those games, yeah. he has a touchdown for two yards, and then he has <laughs> two touchdowns for two yards in the other game. Yeah. So it's just crazy that he, you know. Mike I'd, Evans, even though he's not a tight end, it's like it's like Tom Brady plays to him like he used to play to Gronk almost. Yeah, it's just, you know. It's, you know the ceiling is not there anymore. And I think we touched on it in the offseason. You know, like this offense is going from Jameis Winston, who's like, huck it, chuck it, fuck it, slanging that thing. You know, they've been, they're always down in games to where Tom Brady's kind of more of a game manager. We didn't know if he was going to be, you know, slanging that thing so much. And I think we were all kind of lower on Mike Evans, thinking he was more of like a wide receiver two instead of a wide receiver one. And I think we're kind of seeing that outside of those touchdowns that have been keeping him afloat, he really hasn't done much. Um, and in a game where, like I said, if I'm the Chargers uh, defensive coordinator, I'm literally just shadowing him with Casey Hayward, and I'm doubling him over the top, and I'm I'm limiting what Mike Evans does because I'm not afraid of any of these other pass catchers that the Bucks have. Yeah, so de I definitely temper expectations, but you still got to play him, I think. For sure. Uh, so OJ Howard, I don't think I threw Gronk in here, but yeah, I'm definitely not playing OJ Howard. If there is one tight end I would be playing, it would be Gronk. I mean, he kind of had like a little resurgence last week. Seven targets, Gronk did six receptions, 48 yards, and um. So yeah, I'm not playing OJ Howard, but I guess if you're in a pinch, maybe you had Janu, you know, and you're looking for. I did put it in here. Yeah, good, good job, good job. Uh, but if yeah, if you're in a pinch, you had Janu, or maybe you know you have Hooper, and he's just been a bum, or some of these other tight ends, you just haven't been performing up to your expectations i'm not mad at potentially starting gronk as a back end tight end one i mean he's played 70 percent or more of all the snaps in all three games the only bad thing is that he's only running a route on half of the time he's on the field but in a game where no chris godwin you know scotty's scotty miller's you know he's up and down he's not really proven yeah scotty miller's questionable. could tom brady <clears throat> lean on his boy gronk in a game where, you know what I'm saying, like they're, they're trying to move the ball, we could see another six receptions to a guy like Gronk, and maybe he gets into the end zone. Yeah. Not a bad play if you got Jono. I like it. Uh, Buccaneers defense, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it either. It's a streaming option. It's like a back-end defense. It's a low over under 42. Yeah. Uh, Justin Herbert, still a rookie. He throw, you know, He's definitely – Get down to throw some picks possibly so i'm not mad at it uh okay we can move on to the next game we got the jaguars are playing the cincinnati Bengals. the Bengals are favored by two and a half i don't have the over under on me um but yeah uh we'll start on the jaguar side of the ball gardner Minshew. hey gardner gardner that's my partner hey gardner oh the over under is 49 it moved up so so, pretty decent over under 49 points. Um, yeah. I mean, I think this is going to be a shootout. I think this is going to be one of the more exciting games um, on Sunday. And I do like Minshew. I mean, three touchdowns in his first two uh, games. Obviously, week three against the Dolphins, he puts up a dud for you. Uh, but you know, I think we were kind of joking around with it, saying, you know, maybe it's because there was no DJ Chark. And, you know, when you kind of don't have your number one receiver on the field, maybe that kind of limited them and, you know, give it to the Dolphins. I am a Dolphins fan, but give it to the Dolphins. They do have some good corners. Xavier Howard is one of the better corners 
in the NFL. And, you know, they drafted a corner in the first round as well. So just some stingy corners there for Miami against, you know, less stellar receivers out there. And, you know, LaVisca Chenault was still a rookie. Keelan Cole still kind of just an average receiver to me, in my opinion. So I think having DJ Chark back will help Gardner, Min uh, Gardner Minshew in this game. Um, I know it says it's a bad matchup on paper sometimes. You know, we're getting to that point of season where now you can kind of start looking at the data of the previous matchups, whether it's a red red matchup or a green matchup. Red matchup obviously meaning bad, green uh, obviously meaning good matchup. So this is a, a red matchup, but then sometimes you kind of have to look a little bit deeper into it. So it is a red matchup, but the Bengals have played against the, the Chargers with Tyrod, who did nothing. They played against Cle uh, Cleveland. Baker Mayfield did nothing because they ran all over them, so Baker didn't have to throw the ball. And then in week three, the Bengals played against Carson Wentz and the Eagles, and Carson Wentz has just looked terrible. He's looked terrible. They have nobody to throw to. Yeah, so the, those numbers are kind of skewed right there. So even though it's a red matchup, I would still say this is a favorable matchup for Gardner Minshew, and I wouldn't be mad at having him as like a back end yeah, QB one. I'm not mad at it either. Um, James Robinson, you playing against Bengals? I think you got to play him for sure. I just got to admit it. You know, sometimes you know we make good calls, but then sometimes we make bad calls. And I think I was you know saying I want nothing to do with any of these guys. Chris Thompson, that's it. Now you know I don't want James Robinson. Blah blah blah. But my guy is the RB6 in PPR right now. <laughs> but dude, remember I did say, I was like, you know, sometimes these guys just need a chance. Yeah. And it's like he got his chance and he fucking ran with it. Uh, literally. You did say that, though, <laughs> when we went through this, uh, you know, Fortnite got released and it was Ra Raquel Armstead. Are you going to go do it? You had the first waiver priority and you said, I'm not going to waste it on Raquel Armstead because I don't think he's going to be the guy. So, yeah, yeah. You, you did call this one. And, uh, well, I mean, I didn't think it was James. I didn't think James Robinson was going to, you know, do what he's doing now. But uh, I, you know, I but definitely you, I just definitely, you know, you see it year in year, year in and year out is like these running backs just get a chance and all of a sudden they become the starting running back. It's like even Eckler. Yeah. Eckler is now a top tier running back and it's like he was, and he, you know, I don't know if he was undrafted or not, but I think he was maybe fifth round or something. So, you know, it definitely can happen. But yeah, for sure play James Robinson against the Bengals. Yeah, I think he, I think he's entering that set it and forget it like RB2 with RB1 upside uh, each and every single week. Which is pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, DJ Chark. Yeah, you're down up DJ, coming back. DJ Chark. He's practiced all week, so I think I don't even think he has an injury uh, designation on his name. So I think he should be good to go. Ten or more points in PPR in weeks one and weeks two. The only thing that worries me with Chark is he's only seen three targets and four targets for a guy who you you know we we're expecting this Jaguars team to be you know chasing every single game. We we're expecting you know DJ Chark to be getting eight, nine, ten targets a game on a consistent basis. Um, but with that being said, I'm still dying up DJ Chark this week. Yeah, yeah If he I does have a good to. game, maybe potentially try to move him for a like, guy with a safer floor who's getting more targets. But, yeah, if I have DJ Chark, I'm throwing my lineup. He's, yeah. he's a, a solid flex receiver. Yeah. Uh, Keelan Cole Sr., do you think it, with DJ Chark back, he goes back down? Keelan Cole was a scenario where sometimes we feel like if a player's out, like Chark's out, oh, okay, Keelan Cole's going to thrive. You know, like Marvin, you know, Kenny Galladay's out, Marvin Jones is going to thrive. Um, I think we even did it uh, last year with Corey Davis. You know, oh, A.J. Brown's out, Corey Davis is going to thrive. But it's like these second-tier receivers need that one out there because the, now the defenses aren't, aren't putting the, the best corner or, you know, they're not really keening on that number one receiver. And it kind of gives these, like, wide receiver twos, wide receiver threes for the team to really eat. So I think he'll have a better game than what he did last week. But I still, I don't know. I just want nothing to do with Keelan Cole. I just, cool guys had a couple of good games, but I just feel like the receiver position is so deep that I'd rather You'd rather start play somebody anybody, else. Although another person. Yeah. Okay. Uh, LaVisca Chenault. I mean, s same scenario. Same exact thing. I mean, yeah, I, I, these guys are rosterable. Like, I'm not dropping these guys. Uh, especially with Chark, you don't know what, how you know if, if it's a rib injury. They said chest and back, so I don't know what that means exactly. But if you know Chark goes out and he re, re aggravates it or he gets hurt and he misses any time, then obviously these guys, you know, going forward should have better value. So I'm not dropping them, but I don't know if I'd be playing them. Yeah, they're risk, they're risk, high risk, high reward plays. Yeah, and I feel like if they don't land in the end of the zone, you're not exactly excited. Also, we didn't really like Lavisca Chenault. Coming out of college, to be honest, but that's just us. Yeah. Um, but okay, we can go on to Tyler Eifert, the it's tight gonna, end. It's gonna be a no for me, dog. Yeah, it's gonna be a no for me as well. 
Um, he, I think he's touchdown dependent, if you could say. For sure. Um, but yeah, and the Jaguars defense. That's gonna be another. No yeah, for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fade that one. Okay. Uh, but we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow. We talked about it before. Uh, I think you can light up Joe Burrow in this matchup. It's not bad. Yeah, not at all. He's actually QB ten right now on the year. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely down at my guy Joe Donkey at home. I mean, the, you know, 300 yards and back to back games, and just something like you like seeing here from the quarterback. I mean, he's throwing the ball a ton. Uh, 36 or more pass attempts in every single one of his games. So you just like seeing that from your quarterback. More pass attempts, more opportunities for yards and touchdowns. I do like me some Joe Donkey this week. Yeah, we like it. Uh, Joe Mixon, you got to set it and forget it, right? Yeah, I think Mixon, he's kind of doing what he did last year. You know, he's starting off slow, but last year, you know, towards the tail end of the season, last seven, eight games, I think he really turned it on. And, you know, we kind of did on the live stream. We said, you know, what team, someone asked, what team you think – suffered the most without preseason and I think it's the Bengals here you know because you got AJ Green coming back off injury you got T Higgins a rookie John Ross you know is he going to be a part of the future or not Joe Burrow's a rookie so you know they've really had you kind of just throwing all these guys out there and they're all playing together for the first time you know you kind of have to really build some chemistry and rapport together uh, but I think as the season progresses you're going to see a lot more games, a lot more better games from Joe Mixon. And I think instead of maybe being an RB1, he's kind of just more of an RB2. Uh, but, I mean, you can't deny the work that he's getting. 19 or more touches in every single game. And in terms of, like, who's the running back there, Mixon or Gio, Joe Mixon has 52 rush attempts on the year. Gio Bernard has two. So it's not even close. It is yeah. the Joe Mixon show there. And like I said, I think there's better days ahead for this offense. I, f I feel like they're going to start clicking and they'll start get the ball rolling a little bit more. If you can buy low on Joe Mixon right now, I would. Yeah, I think that's definitely the move for sure. Uh, Gio Bernard. Uh, no. That's going to be no. Uh, A.J. Green. So it's a AJ, decent matchup. Yeah. I know A.J. Green hasn't put up anything crazy right now. And people, are probably, you know, people might, might be panicking. Um, I'm still, you know, diving in. I'm still drinking that Kool-Aid at least one more week. He actually leads the team in targets, so he's still being, you know, Burrow's looking for him. He's trying to make things happen, but I kind of said it, it's kind of like the Odell Beckham Jr. thing where I was joking around saying, like, Odell Beckham's like a fart. If you got to force it, it's shit, and I feel like that's kind of what they're doing. They're just, like, forcing it to AJ Green to make it work, but, like, you, you can't just force it. Like, you got to kind of let it just happen, um, but, I mean, he is being targeted heavily, leads the team in targets, and he's got six end zone targets which is like I'm up there like amongst the most in the NFL. But my guy's got zero touchdowns on the year. Six end zone targets, zero touchdowns. I'm just yeah, going to say like to see that. I'm just going to say that eventually my guy's going to score a touchdown. I don't know, it and could I'm, be a I'm, Nick Chubb. I'm going to bank on it being this week AJ Green scores a touchdown. So yeah, if I have AJ Green, I'm down. I'm up in this matchup. Throw the prop bet out there. AJ Green scores. T Higgins came off a big game. Are you going to play him again this week? I think I would. In a flex spot. So I'm in a scenario where I was talking about in the, earlier in the episode where my team is just falling apart. So I picked up T. Higgins because I just I need anybody and anyone who's got a pulse that could potentially get me some type of, of produ production in that league. And like I said, you know they're they're in one of the past happiest uh, teams in the NFL. The Cincinnati Bengals are, and you know T. Higgins, uh, his snap percentage has increased each and every single game. Six targets uh, two weeks ago, nine targets last week. I think this is going to be like the A.J. Green of the future going forward. He's going to kind of take over and be the guy. Um, you know, John Ross has been a healthy scratch back-to-back -back weeks, so I think he'll be a guy who probably gets moved at the trade deadline. John Ross will. Yeah. So right now you're seeing a, a three, three wide receiver sets with Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and A.J. Green. So I'm not mad at potentially starting T. Higgins if you're in a pinch. I'm not rushing out to go throw him into my lineup and starting him over some like more proven guys. But like I said, I'm in a pinch in a league, and I, I need just somebody to start. I mean, maybe you had a couple players from the Titans and the Steelers game, uh, some injuries as well, and you just need somebody who's in there. Yeah, I do like me some T. Higgins. Yeah. I'm um, with it. Tyler Boyd. Oh, yeah. Set it and forget it. Tyler Boyd, you got to play it. Yeah. You got to play Tyler Boyd. How about the Bengals defense? That's going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah. I think the Bengals defense is against the Jets, and that's about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's move on to the next game. We got the Minnesota Vikings. 
who have been not very great this year, playing the Houston Texans. The Texans are favored by three and a half points. The over under is 53 and a half. I think all of the Vikings games were at like 70 points or something like that. Seems like, um, yeah, Kirk Cousins, you, you starting them? I'm not starting Kirk Cousins. Yeah, like I, I like I, we just can. went from one of the most pass happiest offenses with uh, Joe Burrow and the Bengals to one of the least pass happy teams in the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, my guy Kirk Cousins has not thrown over 28 pass attempts in any game so far of the season. I just don't like seeing that. There's just better options out there. So yeah. he's definitely not playing Kirk Cousins. Yeah, Dalvin Cook, you got to start it. Yeah, he's cooking. Set it and forget it. Alexander Madison. You're not starting Madison, but he needs to be rostered you in every single of the league. You know, if you have Dalvin Cook, if he's on the waiver wire for whatever reason, or yeah, he, definitely go check. get him. You know, I, somebody dropped him in one of my leagues, and I'm going to go swoop him up because, swoop him. you know, if anything happens to Dalvin Cook, Madison would be the main guy. Yeah. Uh, let's go Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen, set it Sorry. and forget it. And then uh, Justin Jefferson came off a big week. He was a big waiver wire ad for this past week. Are you starting Justin Jefferson against the Houston Texans? I'm not mad at it. Maybe you just kind of ride the hot hand. I mean, he had a monster game, seven catches, 175 yards in a tug. He would be like a wide receiver three flex option for me right there. I mean, obviously, Justin Jefferson, you picked him up off the waiver wire. You drafted him in the later rounds, so you probably have some better receivers, I would assume. But I'm not mad at starting him, like I said, wide receiver three, flex option, in a game that has a high over-under that I think will hit the over. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you on that one. Uh, Irv Smith Jr. No, nah, I a, want neither one of these tight ends, Irv Smith or Kyle oops. Rudolph. I want neither one of these guys. Yeah, uh, I put Tajay Sharp in here. Uh, I'd rather sharpen up, sharpen up a pencil and stab myself but in yeah, the eye. Kyle Rudolph, um, no, by that, the way, he that, did have a cool touchdown last week, though. That if you didn't see it, it's pretty sick. Uh, but Vikings defense, it's uh, going to be they're no. Fall, they're falling apart. That's going to be a no for me, dude. I'm not doing it. Uh, we can move on to the the Houston Texans. Everybody's saying Deshaun Watson's had a lot of hard matchups so far. Um, they're thinking that Deshaun's going to have a breakout game this week. I think this is an ideal matchup for Deshaun Watson. I like it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the time is ticking away for you to buy low on Deshaun Watson if you can. Because uh, I think after this game, his value is going to skyrocket. I'm expecting a monster game from Deshaun Watson. It'd be like at least a top seven, top eight quarterback for me. Um, this, Like I said, this Vikings defense is just falling apart. I mean, they're, they're down two corners. Um, Daniil Hunter, the Pro Bowl defensive end, is out. Anthony Barr, Pro Bowl linebacker, he's out. It's just a mess over there for the Vikings defense. So I think this is a get-right game. Kind of, you know, three tough games for the Texans there. You know, when they play the Chiefs. The Steelers and the Ravens, you know, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games. That's that's a really, really tough uh, way to start the season. But uh, now they get a lot easier matchups going forward. So, yeah, I do love me some Deshaun Watson right here. I think a lot of these Texan players are going to start to eat. Yeah. Uh, whoops. We got David Johnson. You got it. That's a set and forget. Set. I called this one bit. Dude, this is my year for fantasy calls. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you, you did like you some DJ I love, right here. D I love David Johnson. Do I have him in any leagues? No. Uh, Duke Johnson. Um, he's going to play, so I'm kind of interested to see how they utilize him in this offense because prior to him getting hurt in, yeah. you know, halfway through week one against the Chiefs, they were doing a lot of plays where you would see Duke Johnson and David Johnson on the field at the same time. So I'm just kind of curious to see in a full game how much Duke Johnson gets utilized. But for right now, uh, yeah, I'm not starting him. By the way, Will Fuller, uh, okay, we'll talk about it next. Oh, Brandon Cooks. You so, starting Brandon Cooks? Yeah, Brandon Cooks. You know, this is my guy. I know it's been pretty rough for him right here, but I think my guy Brandon Cooks is cooking this game. I mean, outside of that week one game where he was, um, you know, kind of, you know, hampered by the quad injury, and they were getting blown out. So I think they were just like, hey, man, chill on the bench. We don't need, you know, we're getting smacked. There's yeah, no reason don't to, want you to, to react, make it worse, you know. But um, after only playing about 50% of the snaps in week one, Brandon Cooks has played 88% of the snaps in Weeks 2 and Week 3. So my guy is out there on the field a ton, and he actually leads the team in targets. So I think this is a get-right game here for Brandon Cooks. Another buy-low opportunity uh, for you to go out and get Brandon Cooks. Um, so, yeah. And if, if he doesn't get it done this game, then then my panic meter will for sure right. start to go off. Uh, will Fuller. So Will Fuller is questionable with a hamstring, but uh, as of recent, as of – 
today. Uh, he doesn't carry an injury designation for Sunday's game. So, lighter bump, I think. you got to play Will Fuller if he's going to be out there. Yeah, I mean, Fuller, 15 or more PPR points in two of the three games. Like I said, I think this is a get-right game for this Texans offense. I think Fuller and Brandon Cooks are two of the big reasons why you know, this is a big game. And if I think we're, you know, we're expecting a big game from Deshaun Watson, you know, Fuller and Cooks are going to be two of the reasons why he does. By the way, uh, watch it, though, because, the, you know, last game, you know, he was uh, – was it last game or it was two games ago? Two games ago. I can't remember when it was. But uh, he didn't play uh, all of a sudden. Yeah. So maybe that comes out last second. You never know. That's just – I mean, if you have Wolf Fuller, that's obviously – you know, you drafted him. That's what Wolf Fuller is. He's a high risk, high reward, injury prone player. You know, he can come out here and get you twenty, thirty points a game, but then he can come out here and get you two when you yeah, get hurt. Yeah, but I mean, I so, mean that one game, it wasn't he got hurt. It was like it was random. Yeah. So yeah, just so, it know. was like he was stretching, and then he was like, "Nah, I'm not feeling it." So <laughs> Kenny Stills, nah, it's gonna be a negative good. Bronco for me. Uh, uh, Randall Cobb, you didn't have in there, but just oh, yeah. kind of a you know, if if Fuller is to miss for some reason or whatever. Oh, uh, not not a bad uh, sneaky play right there. Kind of yeah, like a little a des- pivot, desperation play. Yeah. A little nice pivot. Yeah. Uh, I wa- I don't want to play either Akins or Fells. Nope. Uh, these tight ends. So uh, we'll move on to the defense. Texans defense. Are you gonna play them against the Vikings? Um, I thought about it at first, but then, I mean, we've seen this Texans defense just kind of get gashed on the ground, and, you know, what do the Vikings want to do? They want to run the ball. So I think we see a big game from Dalvin Cook. Madison probably gets a little bit involved as well. Who wins this game? I'm going the Texans minus four. Texans minus four, huh, with with the points. He's going for it. All right, we can move on to the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson, let me cook, baby. Uh, He's taking on the Miami Dolphins. The for some reason I didn't write down the over under on this game. Um, I think it's a uh, fifty three, fifty four. Yeah, I know it because yeah. I'm betting it. It's a uh, fifty four. The uh, Seahawks are favored by six points. So uh, Russell Wilson will start on his side of the ball. You playing? You got to set it. That's a set and forget. I don't yeah, even know why. That I guy's asked. the MVP front runner. I'm a little mad at myself. I kind of said it a couple times. I uh, called it. Um, you know, in the, before the season started, that my MVP pick. MVP pick of the year was Russell Wilson. He was 15 to one at the time. I kind of just procrastinated on that. Um, my guy is now three to one to win the MVP, and he's for sure the front that runner is, that to is win wild. the MVP. So I'm kind of mad at myself, you know, just you know, mess around, go throw a hundred on it and stuff like that. You know, we live in Vegas, um, so yeah, I'm pretty mad at myself that I didn't pull the trigger on that one. But yeah, you're starting everyone on this on this offense right here. You're starting Russell Wilson, uh, Chris Carson. He practiced limited. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, he practiced. He practiced in full today. He's listed as questionable, but I mean, if my guy practiced all three days and then he practiced in full today on Friday, I can't imagine a scenario where he's not out there. And if Chris Carson's on the field, he's in my lineup. Yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Carlos Hyde. I think that's only a pivot if Chris Carson's not there. Um, but C- Carlos Hyde is also questionable with a shoulder injury. So. Um, I'm going to stick with Chris Carson. Yeah, for sure. I, I think Chris Carson ends up playing. I mean, I, I don't see why he would be practicing all week and then all of a sudden they just bench him or they sit yeah, him out. I'm with you on that. Uh, okay, we can move on to the receivers. DK Metcalf, you got to <laughs> play it. I mean, I he's 6'5", 500 pounds, so he runs dude, a 4 that guy, that guy, he really fucked up on that Cowboys play, but he made up for it later in the game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, set play DK Metcalf. You got to play Tyler Lockett. That's like Russell Wilson, Wilson's best friend for sure. He had two touchdowns last week, I think, or maybe three actually. Three in the three, first half. Three, three in the first half. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, but yeah, you got to play Tyler Lockett. Uh, Greg Olson. How do you how do you feel? I, I I'm indifferent on this one. I'm not mad at starting Greg Olson right here. I mean, especially if you're kind of in a pinch at the tight end. He's kind of like that back end tight end one for me. Um, in a game that has a 55, uh, 54 point over under, I do think this game goes over because I, I think the Seahawks are going to be able to put up you know thirty points on their own. Um, but I mean, my guy Greg Olson, th- uh, eleven or more PPR points in two of the three games. Like I said again, this one was a red matchup, so you might look at it and be like, oh, but yeah, it's a tough matchup. I don't want to play him. But the Miami Miami has not played against any good tight ends. I, uh, I think they've only given up like five or six receptions, maybe like ninety five total yards on the entire year. But we've played against teams that don't throw the ball to the tight end at all. And, you know, we kind of said yeah, – uh, I know, mean, name the Jaguars tight end. 
Oh, wait, it's Tyler Eifert. Yeah, he actually had one of the better games, five yeah. catches, 40 yards. But then I think uh, week one, you know, no one on the Patriots had a good game. Week two, Dawson Knox didn't have like, – he had like one catch for the Bills. But he'll have one catch against anybody. So, yeah, I mean, this – you know, nobody was really being utilized right there. So, yeah, I'm not mad at Greg Olson. I actually think he finds the end zone in this one. Like I said, I feel like whoever the tight end – is for the Seahawks has that touchdown upside week in and week out, and I'll take that gamble in a game that has a fifty-four point over. Yeah, I'm not mad at that pivot for from Jonu. Maybe uh, we can move a Seahawks defense. I'm not mad at it. Uh, actually, getting Jamal Adams, he's going to be out. Quentin Dunbar's out. It's not a. T- I, I was. I would not because I think Miami puts up some points in this one right here. And uh, unless Fitz, you know, th- turns the ball over, I would be not. Playing the Seahawks defense. Yeah. Miami's good. All right. We got Ryan Fitzpatrick for the Miami Dolphins. It's in Miami. They got the advantage with all those fucking fans. Just kidding. Uh, you playing Ryan Fitzpatrick? Because we talked about this earlier. Yeah. I, I might play him over Matt Stafford. I'm undecided on it. Yeah. So I, I do like Fitzmagic this week. Uh, obviously, I'm a little biased because I am the residential Dolphins fan here. But I do like me some Fitzmagic. I mean, they played on Thursday night, so they've had extra time to prepare for the Seahawks. But after a tough week one in New England, my guy Fitzmagic has just been he's been rolling 24 or more points. And st- that's in standard just uh, passing leagues, 24 or more points in back to back games. And here's the stat I like a lot. QBs have averaged 51 pass attempts against the Seattle Seahawks. So my guy, Fitzmagic, is going to be out there slaying that thing. You're telling me I'm going to get 51 on average pass attempts from my quarterback? Yeah, because that's just more opportunities for yards, more opportunities for touchdowns. Does he throw a pick or two, potentially? But, I mean, if 51 average pass attempts, that was absurd uh, when I saw that stat. So, yeah, I do like me some Fitzmagic. In a game where Seattle should put up some points, uh, but I think Miami, you know, they're going to be putting up some points as well in this competition. Like I said, no Jamal Adams, and you got no Quentin Dunbar, who is the starting corner for the Seahawks. So just kind of making that a little bit easier for Fitzmagic in this passing attack to move the football. There you go. You ha- you heard it here first. Play Fitzpatrick. Uh, okay, Miles Gaskin. Do you like this? Ooh, you know I fucking like my. I like it. You know I like my guy Miles Gaskin. Uh, like I said, a game, you know, we've touched on it before on the waiver wire. Hopefully you watched that video. But, I mean, my guys played 60-plus percent of the snaps in all three games, 79% uh, in week three against the Jaguars. I mean, he is the main running back there. A lot of high praise coming out of Miami uh, during the week from, you know, the head coach, Brian Flores, and a lot of the teammates, you know, just, you know, just, you know, singing his praise of how, you know, he's a good player, good good teammate, good football player. Um, and I think he's done nothing to lose that role, and he's gained it all. He's gained the trust of the coaches and the players, like I said. Um, and in a game where, you know, like I said, it, there, you know, Fitzmagic could be throwing the ball 40, 50 times, uh, we've seen Miles Gaskins be utilized heavily in the passing attack. He's actually fourth in terms of running back targets and fourth in receptions for running backs. So another five, six receptions for Miles Gaskins this game? I think so. I do like me some Miles Gaskins. And if, nice. he could, if he could just fall into the end zone, if he could get a touchdown, his his numbers are going to be even that much better because he's putting up numbers and he hasn't even scored yet. Yeah, I like uh, – It's you know, it's funny. I, I had Matt Breida and Jordan Howard in here, and I t- took them out because yeah. Miles Gaskins the guy. Yeah, Jordan, Matt Breida is kind of the change of pace running back, and then – you know, Jordan Howard is the, the like Dre always calls it. He's the, one the ball, yard. he's the ball carrier. When they get in close, they give him the ball at the one-yard line. He just falls forward. Yeah. Um, on pace for 16 touchdowns. Devontae Parker. Oh, you know me. I love me some Devontae Parker. Definitely. I think we're, you're going to see a monster Devontae Parker game. I like uh, the it. The CX secondary has been struggling, and they're out. Jamal Adams and Quentin Dunbar. Love me some Devontae Parker. And here's the thing, dude. I do too. How about Preston Williams? Are you playing Preston Williams? I'm not mad at it if you need – if you're in a pinch. He's like a wide receiver three. Like I said, if you're going to – if we believe in fits, we believe they're going to throw the ball a ton. It's, you know, Seattle, you know, defensive back struggle. He just hasn't done anything, you know, outside of a touchdown catch that, you know, really impresses you compared to what he was doing last year. You know, he kind of, you know, started off pretty decent, you know, in the first half before he tore his ACL as a rookie. But for whatever reason, he just hasn't looked as explosive, you know, you know, not his ability to not really create separation hasn't really been there. But with that being said, Miami has nobody to throw the ball to outside of Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, and 
Mike Gusecki. So my guy's going to be on the field, a shit ton of snaps, and in a game where they're chasing. So I'm not mad at it uh, if Preston Williams comes yeah. out and has a big game. I'm I'm not. I'm going to fade Preston Williams. Yeah, uh, he would be I, like a desperate, like, I don't yeah. want to say desperation, but more of a DFS, sneaky DFS play because he's yeah, probably, he's probably dirt cheap in DFS. Yeah. Uh, Mike Kosecki, I think it's a great start. Uh, he's available in a decent amount of leagues still, so uh, go pick him up if you haven't already. Yeah, I think Kosecki's a top 10 tight end. Uh, he's got top five upside in this matchup. Like I said, if Fitzmagic's going to be throwing the ball so many, I'm sounding like a broken record, but if Fitzmagic's going to be throwing the ball 40, 50 times, you know, and Gusecki's got one of the highest touchdown upside out of any player in the NFL. You know, we saw it on Thursday night. He only had one catch for 15 yards, but, you know, Fitzmagic literally just threw the ball in the air, and you see Gusecki make this, you know, acrobatic catch where he just pretty much goes out and out jumps everybody and, you know, gets the rebound, former basketball player. You know, so yeah, I do like me some Mike Gusecki. They're gonna yeah. need him to make some plays if they want to stay in this game. For sure. Uh Dolphins defense. That's gonna be a no for me, dog. Yeah, me too. Uh let's go. Browns are taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are favored by four and a half points. The over under is fifty six. This is the highest over under we've gone over so far. Um we'll start on the Browns side of the ball. We got Baker Mayfield. Are you starting Baker Mayfield against this Cowboys defense? It's a streaming option. Potentially, yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you on that one, but I, mean, I still wouldn't. I, I hate Baker Mayfield, like I always say, but I think they're a running team. Yeah, they are a running team, but in a game where I mean, the Cowboys have been putting up points against everybody and anybody, so I'm assuming the Cowboys at home are going to come out and put up some points. So the Browns aren't going to be able to really rely on running the ball as much as they normally have the last two weeks. So I'm expecting Baker to come out and throw the ball more than he has if not the most he has so far this season. And the Cowboys have just been giving it up. I know it's been Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson, who those guys are, you know, you know, one's a former MVP and one's, you know, the front runner for the MVP. And Baker Mayfield's just the MVP of Hulu commercials. But, you know, they're giving up four touchdowns to Matt Ryan, five to Russell Wilson. You know, they have playmakers. You know, they got Odell. You got Kareem Hunt out of the backfield. Jarvis Landry, maybe he can come to life in this game. So I'm not mad at potentially streaming Baker Mayfield in a game where I'm expecting them to be be chasing from behind. Yeah, the high over under makes me more intrigued for sure. Uh, Nick Chubb said it and forget said it. Said it and forget Kareem it. Kareem Hunt is uh, questionable with a groin injury, so um, I don't know what his his uh, status is as of right now. Uh, but from my notes, it's he's questionable with a groin injury. Um, but I think if he's playing, you you should play him. Yeah, he didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. He did practice today. It is a groin injury. But if Kareem Hunt is in is in the game, he's in my lineup. And like I said, in a game where I'm expecting them to be chasing points, Kareem yeah, Hunt is the pass catching back out of the two. So, yeah, as long as Kareem Hunt is on the field, he's in my lineup. I feel that. Uh, how about Jarvis Landry? Jarvis Landry has been iffy this year. Yeah, my God, Landry, it's like sometimes you got to put your heart and you got to put your emotions and, and your logic – Aside from, you know, what Landry is here. I, I do love Landry. One of my favorite players in the entire NFL. Uh, but my guy Jarvis Landry right now is wide receiver 61 in PPR. And yeah, that's, 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 uh, uh, that's not good. That's not ideal. That's not good at all. Uh, he hasn't topped 65 or more yards in any game. But the only good thing I can say about Jarvis Landry right here is that the Cowboys have been giving it up to the slot receiver the last two weeks. You know, Tyler Lockett had that monster game, three touchdowns in the first half from the slot. And then weeks two, in week two against Atlanta, Russell Gage, who lines up predominantly in the slot, he had a monster game as well. So Landry would be like a wide receiver three flex guy for me at the best. Yeah. If he doesn't get it done this game, I'm hitting the panic meter, you know, 100 out of 100 panic if he doesn't get it done this game. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with that. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., what do you feel? I, I think, think this is the – if you're going to play him in certain games, this is the one to play him in. Yeah, I think my guy Odell here takes a poop on these Dallas uh, defensive backs here. This is actually a good game for him. Um, the Cowboys are actually down two of their three top starting corners. Uh, Odell lines up out wide 87% of the time, and Dallas has given up the third most points to wide receivers that line up outside like I said, at a game where I'm expecting Banker to have to be able to throw the ball to keep pace with this high-powered Cowboys offense. Yeah. I do like me some Odell Beckham Jr. in this one. And then after he has a good game, if you didn't listen to me fucking week two when I said sell him, after he has a good game this week, you fucking trade him. Trade him. 
Uh, Austin Hooper, if he doesn't get it, I think it's the same thing. If he doesn't get it done here, I mean, fuck. Yeah, so what are your thoughts on Hooper? I mean, I, mean, I hated him in the offseason. Yeah, I think we were I just, all pretty I, down I'm a, on him. Dude, honestly, I'm a Steelers fan. It's hard for me to be like, yeah, I, I didn't like Austin Hooper that much when he was Atlanta in Atlanta, and I thought the situation made him really good there. Uh, I, he'd go to a team that runs the ball more. You know, I and I mean, at the time, he had David and Joker, so I didn't like him at the beginning of the year. I still don't really like him. Obviously, he's not performing, so it's, like, kind of looked good for us. But um, so if I have Austin Hooper, I'm looking elsewhere, to be honest. I, I, I mean, in this matchup, it, it's I- ideal for him, but I still – I'm not mad if you stream somebody else over him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think we were all pretty down on Hooper coming into the year. My guy is tight end 36 on the year. And I know we, you know, week one, we were kind of thinking, like, okay, and Joku's out there. And Joku had the big game. He gets hurt, he goes on IR. So we're thinking, okay, weeks two, weeks three going I mean, forward. And he's just not proved. Hooper could be the guy. And he just hasn't done anything. He's been held to under six PPR points in all three games. Um, he is out there for a good amount of the snaps. He's played 77% or more of the snaps in all the games. But he's only, he's ran the 24th the 24th most routes for all the tight ends. So he's out there, but he's blocking more than he's running routes. Yeah. And that's just not sexy. He's just touchdown dependent for me. Uh, Dallas has actually given up a touchdown to the tight end position the last two games. So could he finally find the end zone? I I think so. But if he doesn't find the end zone, he's going to put up another pooper for your lineup. On your fantasy team. But I'd be trying to find some other options if I could. Me too. Browns defense against the Cowboys over under 56. I'm going to fade that. No way. I would Jose. agree with you. Uh, we'll move on to the Dallas Cowboys. It's in Dallas. So we got Dak Prescott. Um, what do you, I mean, you got to say it and forget it with Dak Prescott, right? Yeah, I think you're pretty much down up everybody on the Cowboys side. Dak Prescott, you're down up Zeke. Zeke he's, a, gotta play he's a stud. Amari Cooper Amari has Cooper, been, been pretty him. consistent so far. I think it's kind of when you get to C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup. You yeah. Know, what are those guys doing right here? So um, C- let's start with C.D. Lamb. Yeah, we can start with C.D. Lamb. Uh, he's a wide receiver three flex option for me. 11 or more PPR points in all three games. I know he was kind of banged up last week. That's kind of why he like he missed a little bit of the snaps. That's why you kind of saw uh, Cedric Wilson come in and put up some crazy big numbers right there. But uh, I do like C.D. Lamb. Like I said, wide receiver three flex guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with I'm with it. I'd rather play CD Lamb over Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup is like desperation play. Would you play Michael Gallup or Preston Williams? Uh, I played Michael Gallup. Uh, okay. Michael Gallup. Yeah, Michael Gallup. I'm definitely dialing him up. Uh, he's got wide receiver two. He's like a wide receiver two for me this week. He's actually ran the most routes out of any wide receiver in the entire NFL. So my guy's out here running more routes than anybody. All three of the receivers for the Cowboys are actually top 10 in terms of how many routes they've ran. So running a ton of three wide receiver sets um, in a game where I, I'm expecting them to be winning and, and you know win this game. So, yeah, I do like Michael Gallup this week, especially coming off a good game last week. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like it. Cowboys defense? No way. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Uh, that being said, we're done with the Cowboys Browns game. We can move on to the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals are taking on the Carolina Panthers. The Cardinals are favored by three points. The over under is 51. I wrote that in a smudge on my paper, but the over under is 51. Decently uh, uh, high over under. That could be due to the Panthers defense. Um, We'll start Kyler Murray. You got to start Kyler Murray. That's a set. Yeah, he's a QB. It. Locked and loaded QB1. Midget with a helmet on <laughs> for sure. Uh, Kenny and Drake. I know that I hope he shows up this week. Uh, I don't think you're getting exactly what you drafted him for, but I think that, I think, you know, it's common. It's coming. Yeah, I mean, with Drake, my guy. Uh, Drake? <laughs> Drake? My yeah. guy Drake, you know, he's been drafted as a top 10, top 12 tight end. I mean, top 10 tight end. Top ten tight end, uh, top ten, top twelve running back. So you drafted him to be your an RB one potentially. Um, the only thing I can say with Drake is that he's just not getting the touchdowns. But in terms of his usage, he's top ten in rush yards and he's top ten in rush attempts. So my guy is getting the ball and he's putting up numbers. He just hasn't found the end zone. I think that has a large part to do with Kyler Murray's just well, he's got like he's four rushing touchdowns ball, or yeah. something like that. 
Um, but yeah, you're dialing up Drake right here. Carolina is one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. It wouldn't surprise me if Drake has like his breakout game of the season. I think this so. Week. I think so too. Um, yeah. So I'm. You got to play D Hop. Uh, I mean, it's insane what's going on uh, with him. He's questionable right now with the ankle injury. So look out for that. Um, what has he been practicing? Do you know what's a yeah? This one you definitely got to keep an eye on. He hasn't practiced all week. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he sat out all three days. He's questionable, like Mike said, with the ankle injury. You just got to kind of monitor it because that, that, that's, that's just not good. For a guy to not play all a practice at all. But if there's a guy who could sit out of practice all week and come out and put up some numbers, it's D-Hop. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Christian Kirk. Uh, it's looking like he's going to be back after a one-game abs absence He's last got the week. groin injury. The only way I would even consider Christian Kirk is if oh, D-Hop is out. But besides that, I really want nothing to do with any of these uh, Cardinals receivers outside of D Hop. I mean, Christian Kirk, just no touchdown upside. Larry Fitz, you know, you're thinking, okay, no Christian Kirk. You know, could he potentially be a PPR guy? He didn't do anything as well. So, yeah, you know, it's just it's just sketchy over there. I, th I think it's you know Kyler Murray, it's it's Kenyon Drake, and it's D Hop as long as he's on the field, and that's it. I mean, I guess we could touch on Andy Isabella. You know, he has the monster game last week with the two touchdowns, but only gets four catches. Yeah, I, I screwed up on uh, the template. My bad. It's all good. Uh, but, yeah, Andy Isabella, Karen's son. I know Dre would be proud of him yeah. if he was here. But, uh, yeah, I'm, Andy Isabella maybe if D hops out. But it's like I, I just don't know which one of those receivers fits Christian Kirk or Andy Isabella, who's going right. to be the <clears throat> receiver to kind of take over. I think Kyler Murray kind of spreads the ball around. He doesn't really favor one guy like he has yeah. uh, been with D Hop. Um, yeah, I, I I would be skeptical to play any of these guys. Um, Dan Arnold, tight end. That's going to be a no. That's going to be a no. Uh, Cardinals defense. Uh, I don't know. In Carolina, I don't really like it. But yeah, I don't like it either. We don't really like any of these defenses. No, I mean, well, it's just like, you know, I feel like there's ones that we love, but it's like uh, this isn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, we can move on to the Carolina Panthers. we got Teddy Bridgewater. Are you playing Teddy Bridgewater? No, definitely not. That's going to be a negative for me as well. Christian McCaffrey is still out. Uh, he's on the IR with that ankle injury. It's unfortunate if you drafted him, but listen, you got to adjust. And we did by telling you to go grab Mike Davis. Mike Davis fucking lit it up last week. He's a great ad if you pulled him on your uh, team from waivers. I mean, good for you. Uh, yeah, Mike Davis played 76% of the snaps, so he Mike was the Davis. main guy there. And back-to-back -back weeks, eight targets, nine targets, so being heavily utilized, kind of like how Christian McCaffrey was in that passing attack. Yeah, definitely dialing up Mike Davis. He's a solid RB2 with RB1 upside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, let's go DJ Moore. Uh, I know the, the Cardinals defense has a decent amount of people, but um, I still think you got to play DJ Moore. I think you're still playing DJ Moore, but I think you just have to temper expectations and just, I feel like, and I, I think I was maybe one of the only ones. I, I can't remember how you felt. I mean, my... I didn't really like it, but then I, somehow I, I, he's on like three of my leagues. I don't know how yeah, it happened. Like I know Anthony and Dre love DJ Moore. Um, and I'm not doubting the guy's talent. I think he's super talented. He was the first receiver being drafted a couple years back off the board uh, in the, the real NFL draft. Um, but I just did. I don't know. I just he, no touchdown upside right there. He does lead the team in targets, but it's actually Robbie Anderson who leads the team in receptions, yards, and touchdowns so far. I know it's only one touchdown to zero touchdowns, but still, I mean, three weeks and DJ yeah. Moore has yet to find the end zone in a team that's you know supposed to be a pass happy offense. Um, he's a wide receiver three flex option for me, and I I actually have zero shares of DJ Moore, and I think this is kind of why. Like I just wasn't really sold on him and what he does in this offense, you know, just too many, yeah. I was Teddy Bridgewater. Like I just wasn't really sold on it, especially for like the receivers that were going around his area, like a Tyler Lockett, like a Keenan Allen, uh, for example, I would have rather had those guys over a guy like DJ Moore. But with that being said, I think at least wide receiver three flex. Guy. Yeah. I think you can, I think they're similar to like, it's like Amari Cooper and like the CD lamb thing or like the Tyler Lockett DK Metcalf. I think you, I mean like a, Great value version, yeah. Uh, Kroger version. You could play Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore every week. Uh, that's just my opinion, though. 
Yeah, Robbie Anderson was your guy. You know, you yeah. you, you were hammering that nail like all right before it, the season started. You're like Robbie Anderson, Robbie Anderson. Like, why isn't Robbie Anderson getting more love? I just, why isn't it Robbie was, Anderson getting more love? It was one of those things where it's like I didn't even during the off season, like June, July, I didn't understand why nobody was talking about him, uh, or like I or I didn't even notice it as what I'm trying to say. It, back in June or July. And then when I was doing my drafts, I started noticing, I'm like, why? Like, he was not even getting drafted in anything. And I'm like, okay, well, this guy was still really, really, you know, he's still a really decent receiver. And he goes to a new team. I know Teddy Bridgewater's not sexy, but it's not, he's not terrible. I mean, he's not great, but he's, you know, he's still good. Um, so, yeah, I don't, it was just weird to me. I think it was more like, how come nobody's talking about this? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, he's a free agent. You get Matt Rule from, uh, you know, going from the college to the NFL, first year as the Panthers head coach. And one of his first moves was to go out and sign Robbie Anderson in free agency. And, you know, I think most people don't realize this, but Robbie Anderson played for Matt Rule in college at Temple. So he already knows. He's already, you know, acclimated to the system. I feel like he's one of those guys where he didn't really need preseason. He already knows the playbook. He already knows the style and type of offense that they want to run there in Carolina. I mean, I think it's transitioned really, really well. I mean, my guy is the number eight wide receiver in PPR leagues. Yeah. And, uh, so that's horny. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I, I definitely think you're starting Robbie Anderson. I think he's kind of entering that. If you're starting DJ Moore every single week, or people are making the argument like, "Oh, you got to start DJ Moore. You got to start DJ Moore." Like, why? Like you said, why are people saying you have to start Robbie Anderson every week? Then, yeah, I mean, they're throwing the ball. I think maybe if he keeps this at up one of by the most it. like highest rates out of anybody in the NFL. Yeah, I think if it, yeah, I think if uh, it keeps it up by week five or six, yeah, week seven, good, good will, trade target because I feel like he's not <clears throat> the sexiest name, and yeah. people still are thinking like, "Well, DJ Moore's the guy." You know, people might think like, "Oh, let me move Robbie Anderson right now and try to get something for him." But like, I would be trying to f- get Robbie Anderson yeah. if I could buy low. Or well, people might be thinking they're selling yeah. high yeah. when they don't realize. But I that think they he's going to sustain it yeah. throughout the entire season. Yeah, I like it. Um, okay, we can do Curtis Samuel. Uh, he seems like he's like the, an extra running back lately. He's been running the ball a lot. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want nothing to do with Curtis Samuel. Me neither. Uh, Tight end, e- Ian Thomas. That's going to be a no for me, dog. No, me neither. Uh, Panthers defense. Heck no. Uh, no. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah sorry. One of the worst defenses. I, w- I mean, I would play Cardinals over Panthers if you're looking at it like that. For sure, I agree. Uh, we can go on to the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts? Who have been pissing me the fuck off this year with bets and everything. The Colts? The Colts. The Indianapolis Colts. We're just trying to win a game. <laughs> Uh, Colts are minus two and a half against the Chicago Bears. It's at Soldier Field. The over under is forty three. It's one of the lower over unders of the year. Are you playing Philip Rivers against the Bears defense? Because I'm not. I'm not. I mean, Philip Rivers under fifteen points in all three of the games. He's oh, had couple, good matchups, bad matchups. It doesn't matter. Yeah, He's consistently I w- I want shitty at fantasy. That's yeah, what I'm nothing saying. Nothing to do with Rivers. Um, just, Jonathan you know, Taylor. You're down. Uh, just, fucking just side note. Uh, the Colts? I had, well, you told me to say the Colts for a reason. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally fucking forgot. You just over here saying the Colts. The Colts back. <laughs> <laughs> we had a secret code because I got to put through these uh, templates. All right. all right, Colts. Jonathan Taylor, yeah, you're you're dialing him up. I mean, I know last week you might have been like, oh, he only got 13 carries, though. But he, he, did, he did get you 59 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but this game was a blowout. They were just destroying the Jets. Uh, so there's no reason really to put your workhorse running back in the game the whole time uh, and during that game. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor, he's he's an RB1 going forward for the, the amount of volume that he's going to see on a week-to-week basis. Sorry, these templates. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, someone asked me, actually, one, somebody texted me about a trade. They were trying to do uh, Jonathan Taylor for – two people it was like jonathan taylor and somebody else and i was like dude you could definitely get more than that for jonathan taylor yeah uh it was uh it was uh jonathan taylor and marquise brown for tyler boyd and cd lamb yeah no and i, I was and i, I told that. them i was like i would not do that because you could get more yeah for uh sure. naheem hines is coming back He's a good what do you guys think? What do you think? depth play, like roster. You know, like you, you're not dropping him. It is kind of crazy. Off week one, he had eight catches. I know they were chasing the whole game against the Jaguars in week one, but yeah, you know, he had eight catches on eight targets. And then week two, he's just non-existent. And then week three, he's kind of like scattered in between. But is that just because they were blowing out the Jets? And you, know, like I said, Jonathan Taylor only had yeah. 13 carries, only one catch. 
So was that only reason why Naheem Himes got involved? I'm not dropping him yet. He's just, but he's a bench worthy player. Yeah, let him let him warm that bench for you. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, what do you? What the fuck is going on with T.Y. Hilton? Because I am like at a loss for words in leagues that I have him in. It's like I keep playing him. I'm like, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. It just doesn't seem to be. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy because you you know you got Paris Campbell. He's on the IR right now. We don't know his status going forward is. Michael Pittman's banged up. He's going to miss some time as well. So you're just thinking like, yo, when is T.Y. Hilton going to have a game? He was actually out-snapped the last two games by Michael Pittman and Zach Pascal. Like I said, no more Michael Pittman. Zach Pascal still being there, so he's probably going to be utilized a lot in this game. Um, he's a wide receiver three flex guy for me here. Uh, I, it's just... I don't know what it is. His targets have gone down three weeks in a row. Nine targets week one in a game where they were chasing. Five in week two and then three last week. I know they were blowing out the Jets, so you don't have to throw the ball as much. But this is a tough matchup in Chicago against the Bears. The Bears' defense has actually been pretty stingy against wide receivers. They have not given up a touchdown to a wide receiver at all so far in three games. And they, they played the Falcons last week. Yeah. So. He's a high-risk, high-reward flex option. Yeah. I would probably, I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like if he has a good game, I'm trying to ship him if ship yeah. him off if I can't for a more consistent, stable player. But like you said, uh, Michael Pittman Jr. is out this week, and then we got Paris Campbell who's on the injured reserve still. So um, if you have those guys, I think you don't drop Michael Pittman uh, if you have him. I, I I still think he's a good stash, but. Um, yeah. I would stash Campbell too. You know, I've read a couple of things that it could be a couple of weeks, but then I've read a couple of things that it could be season ending. So I'm kind of I'm I have him in two leagues. I'm kind of just stashing him. It sucks to waste a roster spot on a guy, but yeah, I mean, week one we saw him. He looked electric. You know, and he he lined up ninety electric. ninety five percent of the time in the slot. Do, and do, over the do. course of Philip Rivers' career, we've seen him lean on a guy like Keenan Allen in the slot. So I'm kind of just you know holding out hope. You know, for Paris Campbell to potentially come back. Um, hopefully, we get some more news next week with that injury. Okay, so this next guy, Mo Alley Cox, the tight end for the Colts. I think you got to fucking own this guy for sure. Uh, if he's on, on the waiver or on the uh, free agency, man, you got to go pick him up, man. This guy's good. Yeah, another. I even mean, even with Jack Doyle coming back, I, I I still think. Yeah, I think he's you know Doyle's obviously a good tight end. You know, he's a decent res- receiver, but a good blocker. Mo Alley Cox is the former basketball player, so yeah, you know truly. Rivers is, is used to throwing to a tight end who was a former basketball player in Antonio Gates. But, I mean, yeah, you know, Mo Alley cox he's the tight end nine right now, which is crazy when you think of him. Um, but 12 or more PPR points in back-to-back games. His targets haven't been through the roof. I think he's only seen five targets week two. Uh, turns into, like, five catches for 100 yards. And then he only had three targets last week. But he gets into the end zone. Um, if T.Y. Hilton's not getting it done, you know, Paris Campbell's banged up. Michael Pittman's out. Someone's got to score a touchdown through the air. I would, you know, gamble that Mo Ali Cox has just as good a chance as anybody to to be the one to score uh, up another passing touchdown. So, yeah. yeah, I'm not mad at him. He's like a back end tight end one. I'm with it. Uh, Colts defense against the Bears. Uh, I'm not mad at it. I, you know, if you need to, because I think the Colts defense is underrated, and I'm, yeah. I'm not expecting too many points in this game, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, the yeah the over under is 43. So. That helps you there. Um, we got the Chicago Bears. Obviously, they're at home. Uh, big Dick Nick. I actually had Mitch Trubisky in here, and I, I had to delete that uh, because I forgot Nick Foles is now the quarterback. Um, so, what are you playing Nick Foles against this Colts defense? I, I, I think not, but I would say I don't mind adding Nick Foles, though. Yeah, I would rather add him than start him. Uh, there's guys, like I said, Fitzmagic, uh, Joe Burrow, Gardner Minshew. Those are just a couple guys. I'd rather start over Nick Foles. But if you want to – I need to see it at least for more than just 30 minutes in the second half of a football game. I know he threw the three touchdowns, but he only completed 55% of his uh, passes, You know, almost threw a couple picks. Like I said, this is a tougher matchup. I think people sleep on how good the Colts defense is. Um, you know, definitely one of the better defenses in the league the Colts have. So, yeah, I'd stash him, but I'm not throwing him into my lineup. I think there's better options. For sure. Uh, David Montgomery, you going to start that? Yeah, I think you got to. Even yeah, I mean, I'm the biggest Montgomery truther. I'm always trying to defend him, but, like, we, we were talking off air. I mean, just having him is a headache. You know, one week he's – 
one week he's good, definitely, one week he's definitely. bad, one week he's good. But then it's like you make the argument, okay, but he's had 14 or more touches in all the games. He's supposed to be the goal line back. All right, now there's no more Tariq Cohen. Like, I think you're starting him because like I said he is getting 14 or more touches and he should see the goal line work. But I think we're going to see a lot more of Cordero Patterson back there kind of filling in for that Tyreek, uh, T- uh, Tariq, my bad, Tariq, Tariq Cohen, Cohen yeah. role. Um, he is know. like Tyreek, though. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a bigger, bigger receiver, so he's playing running back, you know, Wildcat. Uh, but then he can also come out the back and catch because he is technically a wide receiver. Uh, Cordell Patterson might be a sneaky guy to go pick up off the waiver wire, actually. if he, He's probably available in a ton of leagues. So, yeah, go get Cordell Patterson. I wouldn't be mad at grabbing him and just stashing yeah. him before he has – like I said, be a week early before a week late. Go out and get Cordell Patterson. But I think you're starting Montgomery here. He's a low-end RB2. For sure, definitely. Uh, Tariq Cohen, like we said, he's going to be out. It's season-ending, yes? Season-ending. He's towards ACL. Yeah, towards ACL. So, we got Allen Robinson. Uh, I still think you got to play Allen Robinson. Um, I think he gets a boost with Nick Foles at quarterback – that's my opinion. I think. Do you think he gets traded? He could potentially get traded, but he would have to. I mean, he's on a contract deal, so I don't know if he gets traded. But I don't know if he stays in Chicago after this year. Bless you. Uh, Thank you. But Thank he's you. 31 targets, so he's being heavily targeted out of anybody in that offense. Yeah, you're definitely dialing up Allen Robinson. He's a, he's a solid uh, wide receiver too. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Miller. I would not. That's just me. Yeah, he's a high risk, high reward kind of player. He's actually being out snapped by the rookie uh, Darnell Mooney. I know if Dre was here, he loves Darnell Mooney. I want to say out of Baylor. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> the rookie is actually out snapping Anthony Miller. Like I said, he's a high risk, high reward. He's just not playing enough snaps for me personally to throw him into my lineup. I mean, you know, he's only playing about fifty percent of the snaps. He's kind of bailing you out with these touchdowns. He's had touchdown in two of the three games. So I'd be looking for better options instead of Anthony Miller. For sure. Uh, Jimmy Graham? I mean, you got to with the way he's you know playing right now. Um, you know, he leads all tight ends in red zone targets. He has three touchdowns, which is tied for uh, the most amongst tight ends. And then Who, I saw. Who is he tied with? Do you know or no? Uh, I want to say Kittle. I could be wrong right there. Okay. Sorry. Um, but I have a nice little uh, – it says C screenshot. Uh, it says when Fick, Nick Foles was in the game, Foles targeted Graham on seven of his 28 throws, so 25% target share when Foles was in the game. Um, and when Trubisky was in the game, out of 86 of Trubisky's pass attempts, Jimmy Graham only had 11 um, uh, targets, so 13% target share. So Nick Foles seems to be leaning on. I know it's a small sample size yeah, of only one still, half, but 25% target share. I mean, Nick Foles played for last time he was really playing was in the uh, with Philadelphia, and it's, that's when he had Zach Ertz and company. Yeah, for sure. See, I'm not mad at Jimmy Graham right there. He's kind of like a you – know, he's. I, I'd have him ranked in my top 12, that's for sure. Top 10 probably. For sure. Do it, dude. Put him in. Play him. Uh, Chicago Bears defense. Yeah, I'm dialing up the Bears defense at home. It's starting to get cold, and Rivers just looks terrible. I mean, he's known to throw a pick or two in some games. I know the offensive line is really well, but the Bears defense, they got a lot of playmakers across the board everywhere. All right. Now we can move on to the last game. We got the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Washington football team. Uh, the Ravens are favored by 14 points. The that's over-under insane. is 45 and a half. I think that's a little rude to do to the Washington football team, but I don't know. It's I don't, I, I don't know how I would bet that, uh, to be honest. Yeah. I, I could see it both ways. Yeah, so you got Lamar Jackson here. This is kind of hashtag interesting stat right here. Guess how many rushing touchdowns Lamar Jackson has through three weeks? Uh, I don't know how much. Zero. Zero. For a guy who just lit it up last year, it was like 1,200 rushing yards, a bunch of rushing touchdowns. I think he had like seven uh, rushing touchdowns. Yeah. My guy's got zero rushing touchdowns on the year. So if you drafted Lamar Jackson, I know I did in one league, you're kind of – you're not too hyped on the investment of, you know, second – I told uh, you to take back round, Third round potentially or maybe even the first round, you know. So there's probably people reaching for him in the first round. So you're not too hyped on what he's been doing so far. Hopefully this could be a get-right game for Lamar Jackson. 
I, I think know. they're going to come in pissed off from last game, uh, losing to the Chiefs. I think they're they're going to. I think they could destroy. Yeah, it destroy. does. It does help. I saw um, the Washington football team. Uh, their first round pick, Chase Young, he's going to be out. So I mean, having a guy who's that good and that athletic, uh, the second overall pick, Chase Young, he's going to be out. That's obviously just helps Lamar Jackson, especially for if they're going to do those RPOs and Lamar Jackson's going to try and get around the corner on the edge. That's where Chase Young is. It's definitely going to help not having a guy like that chasing Lamar Jackson down. Uh, you, with that being said, you're starting Lamar Jackson. I just thought it was interesting that he didn't have a single touchdown. Yeah, that is wild. Uh, Mark Ingram. I mean, what's your thoughts on the, uh, these, I think these they're running up. backs here? I think in this situation, they're up. I think Mark Ingram gets a def- decent amount of touches. J.K. Dobbins is coming back. I don't like. E- I, I don't have e- any shares of these guys for a reason. Um, but if I'm going to play one of them, I'll play Mark Ingram. I think it, I think J.K. Dobbins is a is a sneaky guy to trade for, but uh, if I'm going to play one of these guys, I'm I'm going to play Mark Ingram. Yeah, I think none of these guys have real value bearing an injury, and I don't, I'm not wishing an injury on anyone. I'm just saying if until someone or if someone gets hurt, I don't think any of these guys have any real value. They're all ranked outside of the top thirty running backs, and I say all of them, not both of them, because there's three of these running backs here. Because Gus Edwards has been playing a lot. Yeah, you got Gu- Dobbins has played sixty seven uh, snaps. Ingram has played 66 snaps, and then Gus – I put Gus Bus. Gus Edwards has played 48 yeah. snaps. So they're spreading this ball around a lot between these three running backs. And then in terms of, like, who is getting the rush attempts, Dobbins has 10 rush attempts, Ingram has 26, and Gus Edwards has 18. And then you got Lamar Jackson with 32. So there's just yeah. a lot of guys in this offense who are touching the ball, and it's just so inconsistent – that it's hard to really predict which running back is going to have a good game. If any running back is going to have a good game, I want nothing to do with this backfield. Like I said, bearing if one of these guys potentially gets hurt, then I think you know it, it would force them to feed the ball more to like Ingram or Dobbins or Gus Edwards. Yeah. But outside of that, I literally want nothing to do with this backfield. I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what I'm talking about. I think you're playing a guessing game. You definitely. I mean, J.K. Dobbins was. I want to say he was the leading receiver. And, like, he had the most receptions and the most receiving yards last week against the Chiefs. That was out of anybody, out of Mark Andrews, out of Hollywood Brown, yeah. not just the running backs. I mean, Hollywood Brown had, like, two catches for, like, 40 yards. Yeah, so it's just – it's just I feel like you're playing Russian roulette. You're spinning the wheel, and who's it going to be? I don't know. You, this is one of the biggest gamble backfields, and, like I said, I want nothing to do with it. I yeah. would try to not yeah. start any of them if I can. It's just an ugly situation there in Baltimore. For sure. Um. Yeah. That being said, with Marquise Brown, how, how do you feel about Hollywood Brown? Are you starting him in this matchup, though? I'm not mad at starting him in this matchup. He's a boom bust receiver. You know, high risk, high reward. I mean, like we see, we're seeing it through three games. One game he had a, over 100 yards, but then in the other two games he's been held under 45 yards. Uh, that was kind of my argument for him during the draft process of why I said I just didn't want him. I I. Personally, I know other people are different, but me personally, I try. I'm a little more risk adverse. I kind of like guys who have safer floors. Uh, I get it. You know, Hollywood Brown can come out and give you 25 points, but he could also come out and get you f- four points, which he's done like in the last couple I, games. I just play my favorite players for sure. Um, <laughs> he has gotten you six targets all three games, so at least he's being consistent. But it's like if he doesn't hit big on one of those six targets, he's not yeah. getting ta- like targeted enough to put up some monster numbers for you. So high risk. High reward. I think it's a decent matchup for him. I would say more of like a flex play. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. Um, Devin Duvernay. Yeah, the kick return. You never see kick returns really ever. Anymore. Yeah, my guy. Uh, Devin, the dude, Duvernay. I love this guy. Uh, this guy's going to be a good football player, I think, going forward. Yeah, Obviously, it's, it's tough right now. Dynasty, it's, maybe go for it. For sure, 100%. Uh, with that being said, you're not playing him right now. But, yeah, I think he's going to no. be a really good football player going forward. I just forward. like talking about him since he got that Devin, kick Devin, the dude, Duvernay. If he didn't play for the Ravens, I'd like him a lot more. Uh, Mark Andrews. I think you got to play Mark Andrews. Yeah, you're dialing him up. Every week. Um, Baltimore Ravens defense. Oh, yes. Oh, Nelly. Play him. Uh, Washington's football team. God, I fucking hate that. Uh, we got Dwayne Haskins under center. Are you playing Dwayne Haskins? No. Okay. Definitely not. It's a terrible matchup. Uh, Antonio Gibson. 
Do you feel comfortable starting Antonio Gibson here? I do not. Not with, you know, they're, they're still getting the other running backs involved a little bit here and there. And it is a tough matchup uh, he shouldn't, against the Ravens defense. Hopefully, unless you have a lot of injuries, he shouldn't be like your RB1 or RB2. So uh, I think you should be able to look at within your bench and find a better option, probably a receiving option or something like that, especially if you're in PBR. Yeah, I'd be uh, trying to avoid having to play Antonio Gibson if I didn't have to. Yeah, in a game where, you know, they're they're <laughs> – Minus 14, the Ravens. You know, Vegas is expecting them to just be shellacking the Redskins. So how much are they going to run the ball? I get it, Antonio Gibson, former receiver. He does catch the ball a lot. But how much of J.D. McKissick are we going to see out there? And how much are are, like this? How well is this offense even going to be able to move the football? Like you said, I think the Ravens are going to come out for blood after that tough loss on Monday night, kind of being embarrassed by the Chiefs. I think they're going to come out and really want to make a statement. Uh, it's tough defense for this offense to really score on. Yeah, they're going to take their big-ass peepees and put it on this team. <laughs> uh, Terry McLaurin. This so is Terry McLaurin is questionable with the thigh injury. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, it's a thigh injury, but – um, what's it, has he been practicing? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, I just know it was question. I think he missed. He practiced and then he missed practice today, of, which okay. is Friday, and now he's questionable. Uh, so you just got to monitor it. Obviously, you know we'll keep you guys updated on that. But I, I wasn't the biggest guy, McLaurin, and it's not because I don't think he's good. I think he's super talented. You he's just looking, one of the best. I just think uh, yeah, it's like who's throwing him the football? Yeah. Dwayne Haskins. Oh, that's gross. And then like looking at his schedule to start the season, you know he had a Darius Slay, Patrick Peterson, a couple tough matchups. So I was just like, I, I just didn't really want to play McLaurin, especially for his price tag. He was going in like the fifth round of a lot of drafts, and I kind of just like the value of some other players that were going in that area. But I, he's getting into that range, for me at least, where he's a set it and forget it. I mean, 11 or more PPR points in all three games in some tough matchups. He's averaging eight targets per game. Another tough matchup this week, though. Going to go against Marcus Peters, who was an all-pro corner last year. Marlon Humphreys, they just signed him to the uh, – contract extension they got jimmy smith so good this ravens defense is really good but with that being said is he gonna see another eight nine ten targets i think so because they're gonna need to throw the ball to somebody in this game where they're gonna be chasing points um so i think he'll have a safe floor again is the ceiling could be capped though yeah yeah don't i have low expectations but uh i could see him running for something crazy though yeah or uh catching something for something crazy oh missing one i thought i deleted enough but apparently i didn't uh i think uh we got logan thomas the yeah, tight end for um the washington football team right here you just say logan thomas like i know he hasn't put up any sexy numbers i think he's only scored one touchdown but i'm a guy a person where you know men lie women lie numbers don't lie and when you look at the numbers if i told you there's a tight end out there on the waiver wire who has ran the fourth most routes out of any tight end, and he has the fourth most targets out of any tight end. And he, that guy is on the waiver wire. You would go get him, right? Yeah. Well, that guy is Logan Thomas. And I know it's gross because it's the Washington football team. No offense to them and their fans. And no offense you know, to Logan Thomas. But Dwayne Haskins is obviously not that good. But a guy who's averaging eight targets per game is just you cannot deny the volume that he's getting. Especially as a tight end. Too. I mean, I think, what is that? What's eight get eight times 16? You're looking at um, a lot. Fucking. Uh, a lot of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looking at like 120-something targets, I think. Uh, that's a lot of targets to get uh, just as a receiver, let alone a tight end. It's 128. Um, yeah. So. That's what he's on pace for right now, to get 128 targets. I think eventually these targets are going to start turning into production. If not, it's just it's it'd be I'd be shocked. By the way, Steven Sims Jr. is out with yes. the toe. Um, um, so, yeah, just not a bad guy to go yeah. out and get if you're hurting at the tight end position, Logan yeah, Thomas. Yeah, go from John Smith if you got to pick up Logan Thomas, say Gisecki or some of these other <clears throat> better off tight ends aren't there. Logan Thomas, man, throw him in. Yeah. Fucking play him. This week, I, I noticed when you when they play good defenses, tight ends usually do pretty well. Also, yeah. Uh, but that's it for all yeah. of the matchups, baby. Those are all the morning games right here. Check out the next episode where we go through the afternoon football games. We'll break down the Sunday night matchup as well as the Monday night matchup. And as always, Sunday morning from eight forty-five to nine forty-five, we'll be doing the live question stream yes Did I say that right? live yeah stream. i called the last minute lineup live stream Ooh, i like that That's last minute man. lineup morning, dude. I, I like it yeah you like it don't you uh but yeah 
Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Like I said, we're doing the Von Miller jersey giveaway. Uh, look in the description on how how that all works. Um, but yeah, leave us a review on the Apple Podcasts app. Be eligible, and then uh, follow us on Twitter. We'll let we'll let everybody know Monday night who wins the jersey. Uh, hopefully, this episode doesn't get screwed over by uh, by YouTube. But uh, that being said, us big boys are out.